Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter States of Matter. In this video, we are going to solve a few numericals based on Charles' law. I first wrote down this problem which is from the NCRT textbook exercise. It is the 11th question of the 5th chapter for the 11th standard textbook. But this is slightly more complex. So before I handle this question, I would like to do two more questions which are taken from the New York Prentice Hall chemistry textbook. So I would read out the first question for here. A balloon inflated in a room at 24 degrees Celsius has a volume of 4 liters. The balloon is then heated to a temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume if pressure remains constant? Now this is comparatively simpler and it is very easy to understand that you are using that you would be using Charles law here. Why? Because what are the requirements for Charles law? That pressure and number of moles should be fixed and the two things that are varying should be the volume and temperature. That's why it is also known as the temperature volume relationship. And what is the equation that we'd be using? V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2. So what are we looking for? We are looking for V1 and we are looking for T1 and we are also looking for V2 and T2. So let us see in the question what is it that we have and what is it that we are looking what we, and that we have to find. So a balloon is inflated in a room at 24 degrees Celsius. 24 degrees Celsius is T1. Has a volume of 4 liters. So 4 liters is V1. The balloon is then heated to a temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. 58 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume? That is V2 is asked. What is the new volume if pressure remains constant? So pressure and number of moles of the balloon has a certain number of moles of the gas. Therefore, the number of moles is already fixed and you're supposed to now find out V2. So we know V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2. But before I do this, uh, let me remind you that for uh, Charles' law, the requirement of temperature is that the temperature should be in the Kelvin scale. It should be the absolute temperature. So I'll add 273 to this. Add 273 to this. And we get the temperature in Kelvin. So 24 plus 273, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 297 Kelvin is T1. And T2 would be equal to 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 7, 8, plus 5, 13, 3, 331. Kelvin is T2, right? So V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2 and we are looking for V2. Therefore, we will, we will transfer this T2 here. So what would V2 be equal to? V2 would be equal to V1 upon T1 into T2, right? So now let us substitute the values. V2 would be equal to, what's the value of V1? V1 is 4 liters upon T1 is 297 Kelvin into 331 Kelvin, right? When you plug these values into the calculator or when you solve it, the answer you get would be 4.46 4 liters, right? So what did we do? Whenever you get a problem of Charles' law and the temperature is in Celsius, you'll first convert the temperature to the Kelvin scale and then use the relation V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2 to get that quantity, that one quantity which is missing in these uh, four that we are looking for. So this was one question. Okay, so now we have the second problem. The question is, exactly five liters of air at minus 50.0 degrees Celsius is warmed to 100 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume if the pressure remains constant? We are taking a certain amount of gas, therefore the number of moles must be fixed or air and we are warming it up. So we are changing the temperature, the pressure is constant and we have to see the change in volume. So we are using Charles law. For using Charles law, what do we need? We need the V1, we need T1, we need V2 and T2, right? So V1 is 5 liters, T1 was minus 50 degrees Celsius 
the point zero can be avoided. And you know the temperature has to be changed to Kelvin scale. And this is 100 degrees Celsius and V2 is required. So 50 degrees Celsius plus 273 will give us the temperature in Kelvin. So 50 minus 50 plus 273 would be 223 Kelvin, right? 273 minus 50 would be 223. So you're adding 273 to whatever is your temperature in degrees Celsius. So T1 is 223 Kelvin, while T2 would be equal to 100. Add 100 to 273. It will be 373 Kelvin. So now we are supposed to find out V2. So we know V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2. Therefore, to find V2, what will we do? We'll take T2 on the other side. So what would V2 be equal to? V2 would be equal to V1 upon T1 into T2. So substitute these values. V1 is 5 liters upon T1 is 223 Kelvin into 373 Kelvin, which is T2, right? When you solve the, this, the K and K will get cancelled. So you should get your answer in liters. So if you're looking for volume and you're getting your answer in liters, it means you plug the values at the right places. So that when you solve this, the answer that you get is 8.36 liters, right? It is 8.36 liters. So these two were comparatively easier problems. Now let us move to the next problem, which is the NCRT question. What does the question read? It says, a student forgot to add the, re add the reaction mixture to a round bottomed flask at 27 degrees Celsius. But instead, he placed the flask on a flame. He took a round bottom flask. He did not put the reaction mixture in it. The round bottom flask, if it was empty, it means it had air in it. So he placed it and originally, what was the temperature of the flask? It was 27 degrees Celsius. But instead, he placed the flask on a flame. Now, when he placed it on a flame, it, the flask started warming up. And if the flask started getting heated, the air inside the flask also started getting heated. But instead, he placed the flask on a flame. After a lapse of time, he realized his mistake. And using a pyrometer, he found that the temperature of the flask was 477 degrees Celsius. He realized the temperature had risen, air was at 27 degrees Celsius, and then it rose to 477 degrees Celsius. So what fraction of air would have been expelled out? We know that Charles Law tells us that as temperature increases, the volume of a gas increases provided the pressure and number of moles are fixed. So whatever was the number of moles of the air present in the round bottom flask at 27 degrees Celsius, what they were occupying the volume of the flask. At that time, whatever molecules were there, they were occupying the volume of the flask. When you started heating it and brought the temperature to 477 degrees Celsius, the flask cannot expand. You know, it's not a balloon that expands. So what happens as a result of the heating, the air, the molecules which are expanding or as they go further, some of the, them, they start escaping the flask and they expand in volume or some of it, whatever is the resultant volume should be that is V2, they should expand to a certain volume. So if the initial volume was V, let us say, of the flask, then whatever the final volume is V2, it, should, it means that the gas has expanded and whatever the final volume is, if you subtract the initial volume from it, you would get the difference between them. So let us just start solving this and see what fraction of air would have been expelled out. And from that ratio, we would be able to calculate the fraction which was expelled out. So what do we have and what are we looking for? To use Charles law, what do we need? V1, V2, T1, T2. So V1, V2, oh, oh. V1 upon T1, so I'll, I'd rather put T1 here. T1, V2 and T2. These are what the quantities that we look for. 
we know the initial volume let us say was the volume of the flask so i just write it as v the initial volume is the volume of the flask and i write it as v the temperature initial temperature was 27 degrees celsius we'll add 273 to this in order to convert it into the kelvin scale so 273 would be 0, 7, 8, 9, 10, 0, it would be 300 Kelvin. And the final temperature is, V2 is what we are looking for. Final temperature is 477 degrees Celsius, which means add 273 to this. It would be 0 and 71451. Okay, 5. 750 Kelvin right now these are your T1 and T2 do you get this your T1 and T2 are obtained and you're supposed to find out V2 right V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2 and V2 is what we have V1 we have assumed to be V so what would V2 be? V2 would be equal to V1 upon T1 into T2. So V1 we've assumed it to be V and T1 is 300 Kelvin into T2 is 750 Kelvin. Right? So doing this, what is the value of V2 that we calculate? If you solve this, you'll get V2 is 2.5 of V. 2.5 times the volume. So whatever the initial volume was, the final volume at this temperature would be 2.5 times of that using this equation. What was the initial volume? Initial volume was V and the final volume is 2.5 V. So what is the amount of The gas expelled would be equal to what volume? It would be equal to V2 minus V1, right? Whatever the final volume is, if you remove the initial volume, that is the amount of gas that has been expelled. So V2 that we have calculated it is to be 2.5 of V minus V, which means 1.5 V, right? The amount of gas expelled or the volume of the gas expelled would be 1.5 V. So what is the question? What fraction of air would have been expelled out? Gas or I should say air expelled. Since they've not specified the gas here, it's just air. So the air expelled is 1.5 V. So what is the fraction of the, this total volume? What fraction was expelled? So we'll say the fraction expelled would be equal to 1.5 of 2.5, right? 1.5 volume of 2.5 volume, the VB gets cancelled. So 15 upon 25 is 3 by 5. So the fraction in which the, uh, the fraction of uh, gas that is expelled would be three parts out of five parts would be expelled from the flask. So this was your uh, question on, based on Charles Law from the NCRT textbook. It was the 11th question. So with this, I finish Charles Law and in the next video, we move on to the Gay-Lussac's Law. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and share uh, the videos with your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now